Radiant Church presents Radiant Stories, a collection of stories that showcase God's faithfulness to take our hopeless situations and craft them into beautiful testimonies of His power, provision, and love. Welcome back to Radiant Stories. Today we have do you go by Julie Marie sometimes? Like, do people call you Julie Marie? No, no. <laughs> Marie have... goes, uh, it means sea of bitterness, so I would rather them not. <laughs> <laughs> I have, so I got your contact info from Gretchen, you know, many months yes. ago, and she has you both. Both of the contacts oh. are Julie Marie. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, so we're back with Radiant Stories. We have yes. Julie Robinson here today. Yes. She is going to talk about a couple of different things, but she has a really cool testimony and sort of tribute to God's faithfulness and just the way that God can surprise us in our lives yes. with her story today. So she's going to talk about, we, we have a an internship program and a students program here at Radiant Church, and, and she's been a part of that. And so she's going to kind of talk about yeah. her experience with that, and I'm really excited to hear it. Yes. So Julie, go ahead. Go ahead and, and just take us on this journey. Okay. Let's dive right in. I okay. would love to know, you know, right from the beginning, how it all started. Okay. <laughs> well, it's really interesting because uh, it's a, it was a, very obviously a God thing. And I haven't got to share this story, so I'm excited about it. But in 2017, I was getting restless and I have, I've always had a vision in my heart for more and I have passion for discipleship and, and I had questions too. I had lots of questions though. And there is a minister that I, it's a, he's an author that I listen to a lot and read his, all of his books. His name's Rick Joyner. His heart is discipleship. He had a whole year that he spoke on discipleship. And I said, God, if I could just be his friend, and what I meant by that was just be able to talk to him a little bit, not be his BFF or anything, (laughs) but I said, God, and I said the word friend. I said, if I could be his friend, please. So I wrote it out. I said, God, I want to be his friend. I want to ask him these questions. And that day he started an online live on Facebook. He called it um, Rick's Rants. (laughs) And... uh, (laughs) And he's like, I'm going to start doing these every day. And I felt like that was the answer. I'm like, yes, you answered me. And I even wrote him something and he wrote back. I'm like, yes, thank you, Jesus. You answered my prayer right today. Well, then like a couple days later, he said, we're inviting four people to our house and we're going to spend Super Bowl weekend with you guys. But you have to qualify. And immediately I'm like, (gasps) This is God. But my husband didn't think it was God because we just came back from a vacation and it would have cost money and everything. It's going to be a trip and I have to find someone to watch the kids. So it it did not happen right away. But I just felt like God said, yes, you have it. So I said, "Okay, I've got this. So my husband's in the kitchen. I'm in the bathroom and I text him. I go, God said we're going. (laughs) And he's like, huh, he didn't want to take it. So I I leave, I get dressed, I go out there in my towel on my head, and I'm like, Vince, I I promise you, he said we're going. Well, as I'm talking to him, my phone rang and I didn't get it, and it was in the bathroom, and I go back, and it was from them. And it was the voicemail was, We feel like you need to come, so we're gonna cut this in half, the price for you to come. What? The moment I'm telling him this. (laughs) So I knew it was all God, so and it was one of the best days of my life just knowing. Well, we got there and it was an amazing time, but there was one word that they gave me that I, I took and it was, you have a glass ceiling, it has to do with who you're around, and you need to pray that God would break that and that um, you will surround yourself with new people. So I took that word and I go home and I was like, God, I don't know who, but I, I just pray that, I started praying every day, God, break my glass ceiling. And one day I'm listening to, I'm listening to one thing and I hear Laura Hackett and immediately in my spirit, he said, write down Laura Hackett, Corey Asbury. Maybe he means listening to their music, listening to what they have to say, like finding, you know, podcasts and things like that. So like, that's what I literally thought that's what it meant. So I wrote their names down and it was about a month later, I have a friend and he knew that I've always loved uh, Corey Asbury's music. And he said, Julie, did you know he moved an hour away? And so I went to visit and I'm like, okay, God, I'm not here for Corey Asbury. (laughs) I'm not here for anyone. I am here for you. And uh, so I was overcame that. And, but the thing was, Corey 
led me here, but the church was what kept me here. I was thinking, yeah. this is the most amazing church. Oh my goodness, this is where I need to be. So we ended up bringing some couples with us to one of the services on a Saturday night. Mm -hmm. And they were candidates to be part of the internship that I kept on hearing about. And then my husband right then elbows me and says, I think you need to do it. And I remember I was par pulled in a parking lot of Aldi's about to go grocery shopping and I got the email that I was accepted. And I, it was one of the best days of my life. It oh. was so, I was so, so happy. And uh, I'm really excited still to be a part of this. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, I can, I can hear the, the excitement and just the, yes. the joy about it all, even as yes. you retell the story, which yes. is so encouraging. And, you know, I've talked to you before about different kinds of things mm -hmm. and I've kind of seen you teach and, and mm -hmm. stuff like that and disciple, which I feel like is definitely one of your callings, yes. one of your gifts. And the fervor that you carry <laughs> with all your stories and, and with just, you know, the testimony of the Lord and the yes. testimony of your life is yes. so encouraging. Talk a little bit more about when you got there, when you saw that it was all kind of 18 year olds and yes. a little bit up. I want to know, you know, what was the Lord doing in your heart? How did you find the day to day? What kind of relationships did you make mm -hmm. with the rest of the students yes. and how did you find yourself working through that through the year? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, I know that one of the callings I have is spiritual mom and I've had that <laughs> call. I've had that prophesied over me more than anything, but I didn't want to go in there acting like a spiritual mom because I'm one of them. And so I, I had to lay that down and I'm like, no, I'm not going to assume that I am their mom and I don't want to take that role. So Kind of, I had an identity crisis because the person that I am is now, I'm pushing that aside, okay? So now I'm a kid again, and I have been on staff or in ministry my whole life, but I was laying all that down, and I'm gonna like, okay, I'm gonna make this about Jesus. But I, I'm telling you, I had to reassure myself of that every day. It wasn't like <laughs> I had it all. It was like every day I had to renew my mind, remind myself, that this is why I'm here. And when I first got in, I, came, I actually just got back from Israel that day. So not only was I jet lagged, but I didn't know one person. I stuck out like a, a sore thumb. I mean, every, I stuck out and I was like, not one person. And um, so I had to just keep on reminding myself and my husband reminded Julie, what are you there for? Okay. I'm like, okay, I'm there for, cause God told me and it's, I'm going after my next step. And not only that, but I also felt like a little kid, like I was, cause you know, he treated everyone like their age, but I was grouped in that. And so sometimes I struggle with that. Like, I'm not a kid, you know. Yeah, or, I'm in a ministry. Yes, <laughs> exactly. So I, what? I have to be in, I get in trouble? What? <laughs> and I had to humble myself <laughs> a lot of times. <laughs> I had to humble, like literally say, no, Julie, humble yourself, humble yourself. And so I humbled myself a lot and I journaled and I received so much victory learning the truth about God and it's not over yet, but I still have truths that came through. Like, for instance, um, okay, God, you're not fair. Or God, why do you do this to this person and let this person happen? This thing happened for that, but not for me. And the thing, like one of the things he said at the beginning was, he said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And he said, it's not the plans that I have for that person or this person. Everyone's on their own path and all things work together for good to them that love him. So you're on the right path. And the things that you go through, good and bad, are of me because you said yes. And so and you are daily seeking me. And so I have to like believe that everything I go through, good and bad, I'm in the Lord's hands. Yeah. So we had a new year, a new class come yes. in for the Radiant School of Worship. And and it kind of came full circle for you. Mm -hmm. I feel like God's promises were fulfilled. Yes. That he spoke over you, you know, even before you knew about the internship yes. or anything like that. Yes. I love <laughs> the story, the thread of you telling yourself, it's been spoken over me that I'm a spiritual mother. Yes. I know this about myself. Right, right. But I am going to be a child again. Yes. And I'm going to go in as a child and mm -hmm. I am going to continually humble myself every yes, day. Yes. I love that. It makes my heart <laughs> so warm because it's just, it's just a further confirmation of such a specific calling that you have on your life. Mm -hmm. I really do feel like that is such a penetrating quality that you have even when people first meet you. So uh -huh. do you mm -hmm. feel like working at the school now that the preparation and sort of the, the hard days and the transition, do you feel like that was 
really a good preparation for what you're doing now. Definitely, I tell them every morning, I don't even know my role, what the title of it is. <laughs> he said, Julie, I trust you. This is your time. Do what you do. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and uh, so I like, I don't have to like prepare. I, I already have it in me. I prepare every morning. I mean, I read the Bible and things, but I don't have to be like, okay, God, I'm going to make this whole plan and I'm going to do this and this. He's like, no, I want you. I want to be the teacher. And so I'm going to tell you what to, to do. And then he'll plant a story, a scripture, some points usually on the way, on the hour trip. <laughs> and then I get there, and it's like I've been preparing for a long time. And I get there, and it's like exactly what God wants to say. But I tell them, I said, I feel like the trials that I go through, I said, all year last year and even now are things that you guys are going through. And I said, I, I really feel like he is having me go through that in order to, first of all, pray for you guys, and then secondly, to seek him out for ways we can overcome it. Yeah. And so almost every time I'll go there and I'll go, guys, did you go through this? And everyone raises their hand. And it's like, yes. I'm like, okay, this is what I feel like God wants to say about that. Mm -hmm. And um, so last year's trials definitely were a preparation for them. So like, I, not only me, but for them. Yeah, that is, that's incredible. I would love for you to just kind of close by saying, giving a word yes. or giving advice or a charge to someone in your position because you yes. had such a unique experience and I feel like everything you went through in the school has obviously given you such a um, specific perspective to help mm -hmm. and train up yes. the next students. Yes. I mean, for who knows how many classes. So I would love for you to just kind of speak yeah. to someone that is in your position yes. give encouragement. That's exactly, uh, I'm glad that you said that because I said, God, what do you want to share? And what he told me, the scripture he gave me was in the last days, um, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters, young and old. And I felt like the word that God was giving me was the, for the people that are in my position in my age, not to quit. So the sin of a young person is usually lust. They usually deal with lust in there at that time. But then the sin of the middle-aged person is money and power. So that usually is the time where they're after money. They're wanting to make their empire. They're trying to be strong and get power. But then the sin of the people that have passed that age, so like 40 maybe and up, is retire. And so they give up and they quit. And I would like for people my age to get a new vision in their heart to realize that God is not done with them, that in the last days, which I feel like is now, he is going to pour a spirit on all flesh, the young and the old. And there is a scripture and it says, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with the curse. That's the last verse. And I feel called to commission people to stop, uh, to, to, to not retire, but to get a burden in their heart for others, to pour into them, to pray for them. And the first thing you can do is make a list of what God's entrusted to you that only you have, and then start praying for them. Even if you don't say anything, but call out their name, God hears that. And then when, when you're with them, you say, God, I want you to open up a door for me to talk about you and talk about the goodness and plant seeds. That's all you have to do. You don't have to have a class or a teaching. All you have to do is be an encourager and sow seeds. And I feel like whenever you do those things, God said, hey, you've been faithful with a little. Now I'm going to make you ruler over much. So we got to be faithful where God puts us first. But then God's got a vision for the world. He wants to use everyone. It's going to be a body of Christ, an army of God. It's not going to be just the three that are in the platform. He wants, he said that he uh, called the pastors and the prophets and the fivefold to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. So I feel like it's the body of Christ who needs to do the work alongside the leaders and that we don't need to lay down and, and give up, but we need to rise up and engage. So that's pretty much the, the, what I felt like God wanted me to share. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't quit. No, don't <laughs> quit. It's not over yet. <laughs>
So I love it. Yes. That is a really powerful word, Julie. Thank so you. thank you. I, yes. I, I, I'm thankful that you, that you came in and that you shared it. And, yes. and even though I know you have so, you have so many stories and so many yeah. amazing testimonies. I'm, I'm thankful that you, that you were obedient in, in yes, sharing, you. you know, a word that was maybe not you were like, this isn't really like a really powerful story. Yeah, I'm like, uh, what? It's just kind of normal. Yes. Um, but I I, yes. I find it very powerful and very oh, encouraging, and I feel like a lot of people will will find it extremely encouraging. Awesome. So thank you yes. so much for coming in. Yes, and, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, this has been Radiant Stories. Um, Anna Rittering signing off. Goodbye. <laughs> we haven't figured out a way to close it. This has been Radiant Stories. Click subscribe to get a brand new story delivered to you every Monday.